So here is a data set given to us. So the data set represents uh, a car which has got uh, the mileage at different speed and we have been asked to find out at what speed the car get the highest mileage. So I've got two variables. One is the, uh, the uh, speed of the car and the corresponding mileage at the given speed. It's a small data set. We have got only eight observations, but we can use this data to find out what is the optimal speed at which the car gets highest mileage. Okay, so that we'll uh, see by building a regression model and we'll use the generalized uh, linear model and we'll see, you know, what kind of a fit this data gives us and remember what the objective is to find out the optimal uh, speed for mileage okay so that's interesting because uh, the idea of finding a building a model is not just to fit the data you also to find the optimal speed so given this objective we will uh, sort of modify our initial model and we'll get to a model that gives a better uh, fit uh, to you know arrive at the objective that which is finding the optimal speed okay so here is the data I've already shown you the data okay so we'll use prop GLM uh, so GLM stands for generalized linear model which has a set of different uh, linear models such as linear regression model a different form of linear regression model you can use the polynomial form the you know the quadratic cubic and so on you can also use logistic regression, probit regression, Poisson regression, binomial regression, um, so many such uh, regression models are uh, in the family of models known as generalized linear models. Okay, so we'll start with a very simple linear regression model. So the dependent variable is uh, mileage and the independent variable is the speed so we're trying to find out how mileage is dependent on speed syntax is like this it's model and then you have dependent variable on the left side the independent variable on the right hand side of the equation and additionally we're trying to also get the um, the p values and the confidence uh, interval um, the confidence limits for each one of these predicted values okay and it's going to help us okay and we'll also try to see how the mo uh, the fit looks like so we'll also get the uh, you know the graph or the plot of the um, you know the predicted values okay so when we run this Okay, so we'll straight away go to the results. There are going to be eight observations out of which seven have been used. Not all the observations have been used. Why? Because I think one observation is missing and SAS treats this observation as missing. So it just, you know, deletes the entire row. All right. We have an R square of 74%, right? 74% and R square means it you know the uh, the more the R square is the better is the model 74% of the variation in your target variable or dependent variable is being explained by your model p value is uh, significant so overall the model does a good job in explaining the variance or variation in the dependent variable which is mileage I also get the parameters and the parameter is just one parameter because we have only one independent variable mileage so sorry the independent variable is speed so it's significant as you can see p value is less than 0.05 so it's significant we also have the predicted values so all eight observations have been predicted uh, with the given model okay so observed value is 15.4 predicted value 17.5 so there is an error of negative 2.1 similarly in the second case there is some error there is always going to be some error and you also have the 
confidence limit. So confidence limit means your act, the predicted value might lie between this lower limit and upper limit. So we have lower limit here and we have upper limit. So for this observation, which actual value is 15.4, the predicted value is given as 17.5, which can vary between 12.7 to 22.2. .2. Okay, so that's the interpretation for the um, the confidence confidence limit. Okay. All right. We also have uh, an first order autocorrelation uh, test. It automatically does it. So you also have the Darwin Watson test. So you also can interpret that. Do not get into the details of it because it's not so important in, in our case. So here is the fit. So the uh, we have fit a linear regression. So it is going to be a, a straight line fit. So the straight line fit doesn't quite fit all our data points. I can see the first data point is quite away from the uh, you know regression line. Uh, third data point is very away. The last data point, the eighth data point, is also very away from the data point. So one thing is for sure that the straight line fit doesn't fit uh, regression uh, this this data pretty well. So we will try some other uh, fit. So what we'll do is we'll try for a quadratic fit. So we'll use the uh, mileage as the dependent variable, speed as one of the independent variable, and we also use the quadratic form of speed that means the square of uh, speed or the uh, higher order of speed uh, okay so it's just a you know uh, speed square or square of the speed so we just multiply it twice that's what that's becomes another variable we'll also try to get the confidence limit for this okay the rest of the syntax remains same same and let's run this equation around this uh, you know core and see if this one a quadratic fit is better as compared to a straight line fit okay uh, something wrong it doesn't do okay let me run once again all right um so here also the p value is significant so it's a, a it seems it seems that you know the model should be quite good the interesting thing is the r square now in the previous one the r square was 74% now it's 97% now if you know what r square is r square lies between 0 to 1 the closer it is to 1 the better is the model right so 97% of the variation in the target variable is being explained by these two independent variables. So it has improved a lot from the straight line fit that we had seen previous time in the last model. If you look at the parameters, the first parameter which is a linear one is significant here. And the second parameter which is a quadratic one which is square of the you know, speed is also is also uh, significant because it's less than 0 0.05. Okay, if you look at the predicted value, it is way better as compared to what we had seen uh, last time. If you look at the, if you remember what the error uh, or the residual for the first uh, observation was, 15.4 is the actual one and 14.88 is the predicted one. So they are very close. Last time around, uh, in the first model, it wasn't that close. The error was minus 2.1, but here the error is only 0.51. So there is a great improvement because of the quadratic term. Okay. Similarly, you can see uh, even for others, uh, it's it's a much better predictions, right? And it's quite evident from the R square. The moment you have a higher R square, you will have all these statistics improved. Okay. Now look at the uh, you know the plot. Well, it's a much better plot. As you can see, it, it passes through uh, the data points much closer as compared to what we had seen previously. Okay. Now, remember what the objective is. The objective is to find out the optimal speed at which you have the maximum uh, mileage. So, at what speed you have the maximum mileage. If you take uh, 
you know, the maximum value of this curve. Now, this is a quadratic curve. For any quadratic curve, you always have a maximum value, right? Only one maxima, so to say. So you can see somewhere here, somewhere here, look, if you look at my cursor, that's where uh, the maximum mileage is. Okay, so and we just draw a straight line and it, it will be somewhere close to 50, 48. So at a speed of 48, you can get a maximum mileage. In the small data, I mean, in the small data, you need not have to build a model to, you know, get to this point. But if, imagine you are, you are given a, a much larger data, just by doing a plot, you won't be able to, you know, find it accurately. So it is always better to fit a, a statistical model in order to get the, uh, in order to get uh, the optimal, optimal speed at which you have the uh, mileage to be at the highest. So that's how you you find it out. Now one thing to remember here is that when you have these two models in place, you may not just use these two model. You know, for any other instance or any other scenarios, you could, you know, twist your model. Uh, in 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 a way that you accommodate uh, more number of models and just need not be just two model and the more number of models you have the better option or the more number of options you will have to choose from and the way you would choose the best model is by looking at the R square and if you are a training and test data in such a scenario look at the uh, you know the cross validation error uh, or the test error rather, the test error, uh, calculate the mean square, root mean square error from the test data and the one that gives the least is the one to be selected. Okay, so that's the idea.